The Wellness Show, episode number 348. Welcome to The Wellness Show, a podcast on health and wealth. I'm your host, Tyson Bannigan, the founder of the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy. Join me as we get the latest insight, tips, and strategies from wellness providers, coaches, and successful heart-centered entrepreneurs, and much, much more. All right, we're live on Facebook. This is Tyson Bannigan, and this is The Wellness Show. Welcome, everybody, to this fine day on the West Coast. It's a bit cloudy over here, but uh, welcome to the show on health, wealth, and enlightenment. And, uh, and it looks like Sarah Lara is going, going up in smoke. My God, what are you doing, woman? I, I burned my sage. <laughs> all right, you're burning sage. Good. We need all that garbage. clearing to start the show. So we're here to answer all your questions about dowsing and energy healing, help to get out of your way, speak back your personal power, and stand in your truth no matter what. So these are really scary times for some people with COVID-19 and the lockdown. And so how are you doing? You know, how are how is life in your world? Do you need a clearing? Do you need some help? Are you in overwhelmed with fear? Do you want some help with whatever's going on in your life? So what's up with you and what's up with planet Earth? So we're here for the next hour to answer all those questions wherever you are and wherever you wherever you were are and wherever you want to be. So above us is a toll-free number, one 369 7464 to go come and join us phone in toll free in north america if you're coming in internationally it is through whatsapp one two five zero eight oh three twenty four eighty and of course you can jump on zoom wherever you're watching this show the information about the show includes the zoom link and you can join us right here so uh, welcome so What's coming up this week is on Friday. I guess that's pretty soon, isn't it? We are going to be doing another class, two-hour class, starting at 10 a.m. And mm -hmm. how to douse to overcome your fear. And basically, you know, if you're having a hard time sleeping, you have voices in your head, you have worried about COVID-19, your, your immune system is compromised, you... Uh, have acid reflux, you feel stressed out to the max, all those sorts of things are happening in your life. And this is a two hour uh, workshop for you. Uh, and what you're going to end up at the end is what's called a three a brain clearing, which is yeah. how to clear your mind and your heart or your head and your heart and your gut. And when we bring those three brains in harmony, uh, then your body can settle down, get out of fight and flight, and you'll be able to um, just be able to handle what's coming at you much easier than uh, listening to the to the local news. Okay, so um, exciting times here. Lots of people are sending me all the latest conspiracy theory and information about what's happening on planet Earth. Hmm. I think the, it's, for me, it's exciting. Uh, I don't know about you, Laura, but intuitively, I have a really good idea about what's going on and uh well, i don't like what i'm knowing internally or being told through guidance but for me it's quite uh, amazing to actually have people send me evidence from other people's point of view whether they're doctors or they're you know those that know that supports my intuitive sense of what's going on so i find that interesting right yeah it's confirming more and more that to rely on my guidance that uh, there's behind the story that's being told is a real story and so that's exciting to me because it means that uh, the more i help everybody come into their sovereignty the more that they will get the messages about what's really going on in the world around them it's just like you're you're tuning into a different radio station than planet earth's you know fear-based broadcasting and you get told from source consciousness uh, what's going on, and it helps you then calm down. Uh, it doesn't mean I like what I know what's going on, it, because it is very scary. It's just that I'm... Uh, is it though? Hmm? Is it though scary? Like? Well, it is scary because there's two agendas, and if I can't be a sovereign human being, stand my truth, and have others do the same, mm -hmm. then the scenario that they want for the planet is not a very nice one. 
Now, at the same time as there's raising consciousness, so I realize we're at this point. Right. You know, so the more I can get people to be in their truth, you know, instead of having, <laughs> you know, antlers, you know, being popping between the right or the wrong or the left or the right or the mm -hmm. Republican or the Democrat or, or, you know, whatever. You know, if we can get out of that right or wrong, but just be in the center in the, in the zone, so to speak, between yin and yang, or the Tao, or the oneness, then uh, we can overcome that fear. So, mm -hmm. But living on planet Earth with the yin and the yang, the good and the bad, the up and the down, and the back and the forward, can get a bit scary, right? Because you think you need to decide what side of the fence you're on. And guess what? Get off the fence. You know? Or sit on the fence if you really want. It's pretty uncomfortable. But <laughs> the point is, you know, if we see that what's going on is a checkerboard, right? Mm -hmm. Or a chess game, just get off the game. Like, don't play the game anymore. Right. But that takes a higher level of seeing it as a detached observer that this is just a game that's being played. And if you're going to play on the game of, of chess, then there's winners and losers, good and bad, light and dark. Cowboys with white hats and cowboys with dark hats and, you know, black hats and, you know, six guns and guns and war and all the rest of the stuff. And it, it's really crazy, crazy, right? Okay. Anyway, enough of all that. Yeah. So if you're in fear, then come and join us and we'll see if we can get you straightened up. And even now, if you want to phone in, we'll see what we can do. We've been working with people that have been suicidal. We've been working with people... Mm -hmm. Oh, that are in stress and duress. We've been, you know, we've been doing <clears throat> pretty intense cases. Right, we so, have. So bring it with, on. With luck. Yeah, yeah, with lots of help from upstairs. I mean, it's not us, yeah. it's just a conduit, so. I shouldn't say luck, I should say with success. That's what I yeah. meant. Yeah, yeah, so any, uh, anything out there? No, in not the yet. Land? Say, say that again? Anything out there in the promised land? You know, we're all like the promised. <laughs> Everyone's land. saying good morning. Good morning, Tyson and Laura. Um, our regular listeners are here. It's kind of quiet today. You know, yeah. and at least here in the Midwest, it's kind of gray and a little, little um, sleety. A little hung, a little oh, here's a question. Oh, she just says good morning, Tyson and Laura. Good morning, Debbie. All right, so let's talk about what I'm planning. Um, Laura said, you know, while this $44 a week is pretty expensive for some people, they can't necessarily afford to come for a two-hour class. You need to do something different than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, I don't know, you know, two hours of teaching for $44. I mean, that sounds like a pretty good thing. I usually charge $250 an hour, so maybe I don't see why, you know, anyway. Anyway, I, I actually listened to Laura, and I decided that I'm going to create uh, a $33 U.S. monthly uh, fee for you to get everything that we did in that month. So what do I mean by that? I mean, you'll get all the links to all the wellness show. You'll get all the links to the Radical Earth Resonance show. You will get all of the extracted clearings that we do during the show in separate videos so that you can then copy them out and put them on your cell phone. And they'll be both in video form and in sound form so you can put them on your cell phone and take them with you as little mini clearing statements sure and um and you'll get the two-hour class after the fact for 33 dollars. so mm -hmm. you think about that if we do actually stay on track and do two hours every week that's four times two that eight hours plus four uh, plus all those shows you're going to have like 25 hours i don't know how anybody in yeah that's right? a lot i mean you do the time. math yeah it's just like over the top and over the moon so you're going to get an awful lot for 33 <laughs> that means you don't have to worry about showing up for this show you don't have to worry about where in that show did tyson do that clearing oh you don't have to worry about well i can't make that class all that will be available for you to do at whatever time that you want to do in the middle of the night, four o'clock, two o'clock, mm -hmm. whatever suits your needs, you'll have mm -hmm. all that information. So what do you think of that, Laura? Does that sound like a good deal? I'm I'm in agreement. I think that's a good that's a good deal. Do you know make people happy? You made me happy. 
Well, good. Well, that I guess that's what the most that's, important. That's all that really matters. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we're planning, and we've got all the videos uh, done to date. Uh, you know, the yeah. extracted out of those little clearing statements, right? Right. Right. So somebody's doing their happy dance. Who's doing yeah. their happy dance out there? That's Debbie. Oh, hi, Debbie. So my mom just joined, and I want to say happy birthday, mom. I happy love you, and I wish mom. I could be with you yeah. today. What? Happy birthday to Laura's mom. Yeah, Mary. You can call her Mary. Mary, Mary. Right, friend, <laughs> Mary. How does your garden grow? Uh oh, here he goes talking about the garden again. Yeah, yeah garden. Uh, we've got the potato bed. Well, we ain't cut all the potatoes up, so we're ready to plant the potatoes. So nice. They didn't get planted yesterday, but they got the beds being prepared, right, Sarah? That's right. That's right. He said, That's right. Okay. So. My parents made the best garden when I was growing up. It was, as, it was as big as the block, I swear. It wasn't really, but it was a very, very large, large garden. And do you think that I know anything about gardening? No. I was off running around, riding my bike, going to the swimming pool. My mom was in the garden all summer. And oh. my dad, my dad painted in the summer. They worked hard. I played hard. They worked hard. Well, well I am a permaculture instructor, so I actually teach have taught gardening and I'm going to say this with Sarah beside me and said but I never see you in the garden well she's seen me more this year than any other time uh, because I'm making it a commitment to be in the garden uh, right. more than ever before but you know uh, we also ran a youth hostel where we fed everybody organic food, food and we mm -hmm. had I don't know 135,000 people through our front door over seven years and fed them organic food so we had about an acre of garden organic and we ran that as well. So, and then teaching permaculture courses in developing countries, gardening has always been something that really is interesting. Mm -hmm. Then Wayne downstairs comes from a Mormon background and his mom and dad always did huge gardens and fed all them, all the Mormons in the neighborhood, you know, right, whatever was happening, right. everybody got fed, right? They used to, he yeah. said they used to do, they used to get canning and they used to do like can by the hundred jars sort of thing, right? Uh, so no, you know, I don't know if you've ever been around well, Mormons, but Mormons have enough yeah. food for uh, two years, you know. You know, so if ever so did we growing up? What? Yeah, we always did too. We yeah. always had, um, you know, your storage place where you know all our canning stuff would go in a huge freezer with Uncle Charles, one of Uncle Charles's um, beefs cut up in there, and you know, at supper time or like dinner time when Mom was cooking, she'd be like. Laura, run down and get me some tomatoes. Run, run down, get some corn. Run down, get it, you know, run yeah. down, get it. Yeah. But yeah. they used to have uh, root cellars, right? We Wouldn't that be nice to bring back root cellars? Yeah, we got a big one. You had, you have one? Yeah, we have a one big enough that I think we could, well, I don't want to pick on the elephants, but I think we could store an elephant in there. It's pretty big. It's bigger wow. than we really, really need, but yeah, it's right. big. Huh. You know, I come from a background of the the family that lived it, next to me was he uh, was the Waldy family and he ran the local sawmill. They had four boys, so I was the fifth boy. They just threw me in with the rest of the family. And Mrs. Waldy would say, "All right, take the wheelbarrow up and pick up the corn." And she would phone ahead to the Duco border people that lived behind us, and and the boys, us as the boys, would take the wheelbarrow up and they'd load the vegetables in the wheelbarrow. We'll bring them back for dinner, right? And that's that was normal. And it would be eggs, milk, you know, everything would be in that wheelbarrow. It was like you right. know, shopping out, you know, in from a wheelbarrow. It was wonderful. Yeah. So those are my days. I'm used to the the food being part of where I live and the culture. And we're lucky in that we have a wildlife farm here, which is organic farm. Mm -hmm. And so we have all this produce that's uh, locally grown right as right. the nutrients and vitamins of this local area and it's all organic so we're very very fortunate very very fortunate yeah and a green mill you know everything we can imagine our own brewery not that i drink beer and all that but our own brewery right uh, our own wine for those who do right yeah. for those who do yeah. Yeah, yeah. everything is here right here in this little bioregion right yeah yeah well you gotta have something to keep you all there <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, 
anybody want to phone in? Here's a number, one 866 369 You too can uh, get our attention and ask us tough questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything out there, Laura? Can you see? Um, Debbie, Debbie said that uh, we moved to Fort Key Beach. I don't know what that is. In 2014, we have such a hard time growing here in the high desert from the beach. Oh, from the beach, I see. We moved from the beach to the desert in 2014. We have such a hard time growing here in the high desert. Yeah, that's where that's where Google kind of comes in because my sister and brother-in-law lived in um, Boise, Idaho, which is high desert and they had a garden too. And so I know that there, it's it can be challenging from one place to the next. Well, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know whether you would call the Hopi Navajo lands high desert or not, but they certainly knew how to grow. And, you know, they, they, they did the three sisters, which is corn, beans, and squash. And I did that in a garden here. Um, and, uh, and it was really amazing because uh, the corn provides the way for the peas, uh, the, I mean, the beans to grow up on the corn stalks and the squashes on the bottom. Sure. So you have the three mm -hmm. layers of garden all interplanted and they all come at the right time to have mm -hmm. squash, beans and corn, which is the staples in which they were able to do. You know, and all they had was a big yeah. stick, right? They went, took the stick and put it in the ground mm -hmm. like this and dropped the mm -hmm. corn seed in and the bean seed in and at, at the, at, and the squash and at the same time over and over, that was it, right? And yeah. I had to depend on water from Mother Earth, right? Hope, you know, I guess maybe I had to do rain dance every once in a while, but basically mm -hmm. that was it, right? There was no irrigation, there was no nothing. It was, you know, it was all up to Mother Nature when she did that planting, right? Yeah. yeah. So I think you can grow things just about everywhere, anywhere on the planet. It just takes you a little bit more know-how about how to do that. I mean, I've been in Mexico where the soil has been washed away and there's gullies everywhere and we've gone <laughs> in and it's called tep tepapati because the rains beat on the surface of the earth like this mm -hmm. and it's like concrete, right? So you have to get a pickaxe and break the earth up on top mm. and then you take goat manure and bio-organic ma matter that you composted and you put it there and even that little patch, the seeds blowing around will find that little patch. And all of a sudden they, the plants start to grow and break out this tepa patty. And before you know, the, uh, if you do it, like we would do the contours of the land and it would then start holding the water back and then the forest would start to regenerate. Did this also in India, in the middle mm -hmm. of the desert or in the high part of the, it's actually in Oroville, if you wanna look at the map on Oroville, same thing. You do this, you, you scarify the land. And the amazing thing is over a period of 10 years, the water came back to the surface. Mm. So that's wow. how amazing it. So the, I pretty much believe in my heart that it doesn't matter where you are, there's a way to, to help nature regenerate and give you the food that you need. That's what nature said, you know, take <laughs> care of me, I'll take care of you. And thank you, Mother mother earth for your 50th year anniversary which is sort of funny you know 50 years we've been doing this 50 years we've woken up to honor our mother so we were out there pounding our drums in the middle of the driveway up and down the driveway uh, you know on the road that we live and somebody was way down there drumming you couldn't see anybody else on the other end but oh it's fun right hi neighbor that, you know that was last night yeah social distancing but we can pound our drum and make a lot of noise for mother earth <laughs> That's awesome. That's what we did. And the police weren't called, so it was all good. Oh uh, yeah, and even uh, our you know our neighbor who is really really paranoid about social distance, she's out there playing her guitar. So, yeah, you know we're we're getting over our fear. You yeah. Know, oh my well, God. Some of us are. You better hide in your house under your bed, or you're gonna get COVID nineteen. You know, <laughs> wear a mask everywhere you go. You better behave yourself. Yeah, I saw on Facebook that somebody actually was in a, somebody's neighborhood was putting notes on the people's door. I see you uh, leaving your house and are visiting or having people over visit. I will report you to the police. I mean, come on, people. The last time this happened was in Nazi Germany. What's going on? 
We don't need you to be crazy citizens out there, right? Come on. You got nothing else to do now. <laughs> Sit and watch take everybody care else. Own, take care of your own house and your own. Oh. Yeah. My mom was a third grade teacher, and she'd always say third graders were the worst for tattling. <laughs> oh, and no, I think I that everyone's turned into a third grader. <laughs> I think all the it's third graders learn from their adults. That their adults are more adults are more subtle about it, right? The third <laughs> grader has no no what do you call uh, no filters. It just says the way it is. My mommy and daddy said, I mean, they will tell on each other. Right. Well, they, uh, daddy said, mommy, that you look a little plump or something like that. You know, you can't get away with anything, right? Yeah. Right. Like, exactly. <laughs> It's so true. It it cracks me up what what people. Did I call for a mini healing session? Um, From you too. Yes. Yeah, what do you want to heal? We'll find out. She's going to call in. All right. Good. And then I'm again. I'm going to reach out and ask everyone that's listening today to do a watch party and um, put it out there for your friends and for your family so that they two can show up and enjoy and maybe they need some healing or some um no fear Laguna Beach, <laughs> California good thing I turned my phone on yeah well you know <laughs> hi, uh, hi Debbie hi, hi Deb so you want a um, little clearing yeah I um I don't know if I told you when I spoke to you a few weeks ago but um I was in the hospital last month and um, I had just an acute gallbladder attack, and they're like, you know, they want to do biopsy and take out your gallbladder. I mean, just so effing ridiculous medical system. I was like, I haven't been at doctor since my last kid, who's I think she's thirty eight in September. So, what was going on with your gallbladder? What was your body trying to tell you that you didn't get? Well, well, they said I had a gallbladder infection. And I, I kid you not, I got up, I fed the horses, and I did the dogs, and I thought, and I sat down around 9.30, because I got up around 5 or 6, and I just got this acute pain in my stomach. So I actually thought I was having a heart attack, but I couldn't text my daughter to come get me, because I couldn't get to my phone. <clears throat> so by the time she took me to the hospital, I where the pain came on, it was completely gone in like three hours. Wow. Yeah, I did some clearing and it, and they gave me antibiotic IV, which I covered in eczema still in my upper torso because I'm allergic to antibiotics. But, you know, I guess sometimes you have to use that stuff. But I still feel like there's pressure in my gallbladder and a little bit of my pancreas and my liver. And when I lie on my right side, my um, you know, right. fecal valve and fecum hurt. I have having it's not completely well. I'm all right, all right. Say, hang, I, on, hang on, hang on, hang okay, yes. on. You're ready. You're ready. Okay. You want to hear what this is about? Do you really want me to do this for you? <laughs> yeah, maybe someone else um, will be. Okay, well, well here it goes. It. Here's what your body's trying to tell you, and it ain't pleasant, but that's all right. If you understand it, you can clear it. Okay, yeah. gallbladder problems. I want to go home. Oh, yeah. They have a beset experience of life and they're greatly agitated about the ways of the world. So you're pissed off at the world. Uh, you're finding that other people are, you are frustrated by other people. You find them disgusting and untrustworthy. <laughs> you feel that things are just totally unjust. You reject it. You, you, you feel rejected from the womb. And you have a profound self-rejection and self-revulsion at the base as a result. Do you want me to keep going? It gets worse. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least everyone's going to get a good laugh out of this. I know some of my friends are on the call. <laughs> okay. You're... Okay, Laura, why the laughter tears? <laughs> What'd she say? She said, why the laughter said, tears? Do you laugh because tears? He... Don't forget the why the because Tyson is like, you want me to keep going? It gets worse. <laughs> like, nice, Tyson. What? Go for it. Rip okay. me a new one. Okay. <laughs> you, okay, so you, you react to this by seeking to protect the opposite of what you're feeling inside of yourself as survival compensation strategy as you have a, a, a way of 
of being rather arrogant and seemingly prideful. You tend to be rather prone to a certain inflation of your own self-importance and to a pronounced propensity to be judgmental. Boy, I hope your kids are listening. Boy, they're going to be pointing their finger at you. I told you so, Mom. I told you so. You are strongly inclined to feel that you are surrounded by a ship of fools. Wow, that's a good one. And that they're not in a position to, and you're not in a position to do anything about this ship of fools and with a great deal of resulting resentment. Like, come on, you guys. Can't you understand that? Can't you get this together? Mm -hmm. Okay. You are apt to be rather self-immersed, willful, and indignantly outraged at any of the at the way the world treats you and others. That's probably really true. That feels really, really true. You're just righteously pissed off, and maybe for a good reason. You also have a tendency to be power-seeking, dominating, intensely expecting, uh, expecting in your relationships with the world. You don't trust love, and you have a history of disappointing relationships. You are rather insulted and isolated in your relations with other people. You have retreated within yourself in a state of sad solitude and loneliness. You are symptomatically held accountable for things that went wrong in your dysfunctional family. So here's where the root is. I'm going to say this again. You were systematically have held accountable for things that went wrong in your dysfunctional family. And you were accused and blamed a lot. So that's what we need to clear. Okay, that's the, the, the fundamental. But that's true. I know, that's of course it's true. true. Yeah. Uh, this, this, even, is all for the gallbladder? this is for the gallbladder? We're not finished yet either. Okay. Oh, but, shoot. I know. <laughs> I, I asked you whether you really wanted this. But you said yeah, yes. Keep going. keep going. I want to clear it up. Okay. I'm supposed to get an MRI and I put it off. Yeah. You so. reacted with an yeah. overcompensating self defense of resulting in a lot of quiet or overt discord in your family. So you just shut up and went somewhere else. You felt effectively totally rejected by your family. Mm. You ended up systematically grudge holding and justice nurturing. So no wonder you're pissed off at the world on that fundamental level now i'm not saying you don't have a you know plastered that over and you don't have a smile on your face and you haven't been nice to your kids and all of that you know this is fundamentally fundamental fundamentally getting to the core root of the problem and if you know we have to be brave to get to the core uh, mm -hmm. so we can just do the clearing so i would say the clearing that you're asking for is this so it would go i tyson bannigan in my holy name in my i am consciousness Ask for assistance for, um, what is your full name? Um, Debbie Estelle. For Debbie Estelle to, and with assistance of prime creator, uh, the source of all that is divine mother and divine father to remove any and all sources of discord that are rooted in her family of origin that has led to misfunction of her gallbladder and any other resulting uh, energetic discord in her body. Mm. And I clear this through a matriarchal, patriarchal lineage, of star family, soul family, and family of origin, and throughout all timelines, past, present, and future. And I declare it so in my holy name, so be it, it is done. So, uh, Laura, you're in charge of saying where that clearing is on the time clock so we can find it. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, but I'm, it's still clearing. And I declare it so, so be it, it is done. Thank you. Okay, still a little, quite a bit of little action. Oh, going on yeah, me too. Whoops. Oh, I just pulled it up. I'll let you clear it out the rest. Okay, so that, so for those that are watching, you know, this little dingo dangle is called a pendulum. And when we do a clearing, we're swinging it counterclockwise. When we stop the clearing, we just let it go on its own. And when it <laughs> comes to rest, for us, it symbolizes that the ending of the clearing mm -hmm. so we're just gonna like a vortex like a vortex of yeah energy. it's like a vortex it's like uh, john living says it's like a megaphone right like this is a megaphone that yeah. amplifying the energy okay so i'm just going to tune in so that's clear so what do you want to say in a positive sense what do you want to stall debbie for myself? Yeah, absolutely. And okay, so, okay, whoa, 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 need to do this. You can't just say I want to. Okay, so it would be, oh. <laughs> yeah, I, Debbie, come on, say I, it. I, Debbie, and Phil, and only Debbie, and Phil, 
in my I am present, in my I am presence. Say, and I, Debbie, is still in my I am presence. You who? Are you there? Can you hear me? I don't know what happened to it. So it's I am Debbie and my I am presence hereby declare I'm a healthy, sovereign human being, right? Mm -hmm. That any and all issues that may come from my lineage or from my childhood, I hereby eradicate because I take back my personal power and I cleanse, heal, and repair myself until I'm whole, sound, and complete. I declare it so, so be it. It is done. Thank you. Okay, so that would be words to that effect uh, would be the installation. Okay, so don't forget when you clear, you install, clear, install, clear, install, right? Yin and yeah. yang, yin and yeah, yang. Take, you take out, you put in. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I didn't get you to do that. You were quiet. What happened? Um, can you hear me right now? I can. You, uh, di you disappeared off the oh, space of there. Well, you, I, I live in the sticks. So right. we have the internet and the phone pop up and off. All right. Well, anyway, that that installation. So I, I can't, I can't like some of your words. So I, I can get the replay pretty well, but yeah. um, live, I cannot. So there's All right. just, um, that's a disadvantage of living away from town. Yeah. But, um, it's only recently yeah. that we got good internet here because I live in the boonies too. I love living in the boonies because yeah. our, our, Tenant just took her bike off of you. She has one of those things that you do it in your bedroom, right? Or you're in the house. And she finally took off the, and put a, her wheel back on and went for a bike ride. And down the road, she have met three cubs tumbling off the side uh, onto the road. And uh, she said, come on. And she was at the bottom of a hill on the curve in the road. She said, off the road, off the road. And the little guys climbed back. She didn't see mama, but she was work warning people on the road that they need to be aware of, that there's little bears around, which is really neat to live in a place like this where wildlife is so readily available. We get to experience being there because there's less traffic and less humans around all over the world. The population of wildlife is inhabiting cities, right? And uh, saying, oh, this is uh, no humans around. Good. I can just solve this. That is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. All right. We have bears that about 20 miles from here. Wait, I have I have a good happy story. Yeah. Um, you helped me do psychic surgery last week on Joey. Yeah. On Joe. And he, um, I have a dog couch, so humans don't sit on it, but all the dogs do. You know, mm. when we have five five dogs, I'm getting two more. Wow. Uh, he was actually able to climb up the ramp that night. And wow. He, and I've had him for six months do that his back legs are still crooked they turn in like he has very very um and when he pees i don't know how he stands up but he almost goes to the 45 degree angle i was trying to get a picture to send you but i have to tell you he is so much more happier and i feel like he's gonna get better he may not ever be 100 percent, but the fact that he could climb up on the couch I'm like, hey, you're up here because you know, they climb up the little ramp I made yeah. out of some scrap wood, and then there's a couple layers on the couch. You know, the part that yeah. people sit on, but then they sit on the back pillows um, because um, that's their bed. But anyway, so I, I wanted to share that with you because he's he's such a happy boy. Out of the couple hundred rescues I've taken in over the last couple of decades, he's. Um, one of the few males I had, I used to take female dogs in, but he just follows me all over the ranch, like he's my little buddy, and, you know, he was, we went from huge dogs, like 85 to 120 pounds, to wow. little tiny ones, because people don't like to rescue chihuahuas, because right. they bite so much, so we take in several chihuahuas, usually, um, yeah. and, um, Give him a good home, but he's pretty happy, and I'm so thankful to you and Laura also for this all your advice. And you know, you're so uplifting. I have a surprise for you in a couple of weeks, so I'll post it. <laughs> oh, great! So, so I, while you were talking, I was doing some more work on him. I was working on his spine, uh, about uh, just about halfway down his spine, and then so I was readjusting his spine about halfway down. So um, there's some okay. entanglement there of some kind. 
Um, maybe it's a wound or something that happened, or maybe he was kicked. It's something like being kicked that has put his spine out of alignment. So just doing that and unnodding it. Uh, I was led to do that while you were speaking. So let me just see if we're done here. You know, tune in. See if we can. Uh, so it's sort of like braided rope that I need to. to uh, so I'm just going to uncomb it. Just comb it out. I'm combing it out. It's okay. mostly on the on. If I'm, if I'm behind the dog, it's mostly on his left side, looking at the dog and looking directly at the. Well, anyway, if I bat his tail, it's on his left side. I'm just combing it out. Okay. So uh, let me just okay. see if we're done. I'll just check in here. So on a scale of zero to 100 being done, we're still working on it. So let's see what else we need to do there. Okay, we're done. All right, I'm gonna let you go. There's somebody else that wants to phone in. Thank you for phoning in, much appreciated. Bye for now. Okay, thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, welcome to the wellness show. Uh, hi, Louis, how are you doing? I had a friend do a sound healing uh, video for me yesterday. Yeah. And I'm going to play it today again. So that didn't help uh, a bit. Um, but it's very hard. Um, now I'm, I'm just wondering if you can do a little healing on my mom. I spoke to her yesterday. And she had a lot of pain in the back and the, and the chest, which is something that she gets often. I mean, I'm not saying it's the virus, but she was a smoker for many, many years. So I wonder what you can do for her. For her sure, we can. And we can her, her knees and, and legs. She has one, I think it's the right side, that she could barely, you know, walk <clears throat> the distance. She actually gets on a mule in order to go to the farm. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I'm getting a we should I should getting we should work on her lungs. So I'm already working on her lungs. So let's do that, oh, that first because if she can if she can breathe properly, then the oxygen will get into where it needs to go and then the healing can happen from the oxygenation of the blood in the particular yeah. areas that are damaged. So that's a minute here. So there's a lot of goo in the lungs, it's not very nice. So I'm going to go in there and uh, well, we'll use a, we're just going to use a vacuum cleaner. Let's get in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm adding technical sounds here, dude. No, anyway. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're going to suck all this crap right out of the lungs. Boy, a lot in the right lung. I mean, if I'm on, if I'm in her body, it's her right how long, lung. How long were they married? Can you ask him? Can you hear that? How long were you married? Uh, no, this is my mom. This is his mom. Uh, he didn't oh, marry his mom. Know. Come on. No, 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 no. I thought it was, I thought it was his father-in-law's wife. Oh, this is his mom. And no, she, she's 92. She was discharged from the hospital. Um, I mean, she went after him and she got discharged before. She was very, very feisty about not getting any injections or anything. She was really giving him a fight. So... So anybody, very good, yeah. So anybody out there, you know, really encourage your loved ones to. Um, My wife, uh, Tyson, had the same issues with the with the oxygen because she had been admitted with uh, kidney okay, problems. Okay, I'm getting way too much information. I got to work on one yeah. thing at a time. So. Okay. So okay. what are we working uh, on? We were work well, 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 working. We're working on his mom's lung. His so right, right on right his mom's lung. lung. Okay, great. So I need to focus on that. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's looking a lot better now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually starting to go pink. Means the blood is starting to flow. Sure is taking a while though to clear this out. There's a there's a lot of emotion and wrapped up around this. Yeah, not being able to breathe to me is one of the scariest things on the planet. Uh, 
Yeah. So let me just check in on the scale of zero to 100. Yeah, we're still working. We've still got about 25% to go. So um, okay. I think I'm going to do a big flush this time. I'll get a flushing uh, fluid out. Do a, a power wash. All right. Okay. We're going to bring in some air and dry it all. Okay. Get a bone dryer. And now we're going to vacuum that up. All right, I'm going to tune in now and see how we're doing. Okay, we're just about done. A little bit more. How are you? How, what do you think, Laura? Well, um, are you I'm, doing, I'm not doing any more work because I'm done. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm done there. I would, I would though ask him um, to talk about what she's so sad about because I think that will help too. And it, and either that or she'll, she's, no? Uh, you'll, you'll hear that it'll go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. No, just the mom, not him. Right. Right. But my mom separated from my dad when I was eight. So your mom, so Laura wants to know what says that um, your mom is very, very sad. Yes, she is because there's a lot of grief. Um, and yeah, because we I, just did I, this healing, she needs to she needs to talk about it, but but we don't need to know about it. She just needs so to So you talk need to have it. a conversation with your mom because that Yeah, that, she doesn't speak to me about uh, her life or my dad. Well, all right, do you know how to do know. this at a distance? You're a healer, so you know how to go to the court of attunement and have a conversation but, with her soul. Oh, good, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's what you need to do is go to a court at home and have a conversation with her soul. She doesn't feel that she's loved or appreciated. And that grief is what's yeah. lending to, uh, leading to the lung problem. Mm -hmm. And her desire to smoke has been an attempt to try and stop the stress there because she feels something's the matter with her lungs. So the more you yeah. can uh, spend time with her and love her at that You'll be surprised all of a sudden out of the blue. I'm she's trying to get there. So you, you interrupted me. You, oh, whoa, well, you interrupted me. So just a minute here. Let me finish. Okay. So the, when you, the more you do in the court of atonement, you will be surprised because she's going to reach out to you at some point when you do that. You'll know that you've made the connection when she reaches out to you. Okay. Okay. All right. So thank you very much for phoning in and, uh, Hopefully that will help you. Can you check on my wife uh, quickly? Uh, what do I know? Because she's having, I mean, we, we were exposed to, to her father and mother both. Um, I mean, uh, I'm really concerned that my wife has had full bladder surgery, you know, in, in a pseudotumor condition with the brain uh, accumulates so much fluid. She has okay. lots of headaches. All right. So there's somebody else phone, phoning in. Uh, I just got to say this. You know the answer to this is it all begins and ends with you. When you're clear in yourself and love yourself unconditionally, then everybody in your family is going to shift. So this is an inside job, right? And I know that it's very difficult for you because you, everything's going on around you. It's swirling around you. You want to solve it outside of yourself. You're being taught as a healer to do it from the inside out, right? So that's the message. All right. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot of conditional love. It's being, you know, okay. it's really. Uh, uh, okay, Lois, Lois, we have to go. We have somebody coming in. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thank Bye for now. Hello, welcome to the Wellness Show. Hello, hi there. Hi. <laughs> Who are we talking to? Hi, this is Prem. Welcome. So how can we help you? Well, uh, I set up your show. Thank you both. Um, I, uh, well, I actually had a question that's interesting. I'm a healer, and I've been doing it for many years. Um, but I keep bumping into a problem. So I have a family member um, that's always having issues with being placed by entities and it's you know um so it, it 
what shall I say, comes and goes, and every time I clear it, things are fine, and it finds its way back in. So I'm, I didn't know if you had any suggestions as to what I might be missing on this. Um, you know, I've, got, I've worked on, like, the timelines and four little dimensions. Right. Alternate selves. Um, so I'm, miss, I'm absolutely missing something. And, okay. you know, in healing work, they're always evolving. So that's right. why I thought. Laura's I, got her finger up, so it. let's give, give it over to Laura. Laura so what, I, what I'm hearing I, is that that um, it's the same entity that keeps coming back over and over and over. Does she yeah, right? and it and yeah. it gets this person to jump right into the alcohol bottle again, mm -hmm. and then it mm -hmm. you know goes into absolute chaos, and it pretty much screws the whole family over because it's you know it's been going on for eons since she mm -hmm. was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, so I know something happened there. I mean, we have like a lot of family curses and stuff, but. I've worsened a lot of it, but as usual, there's always a gap that we can't see. So, well, I think it, 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 may, it may be a good candidate for the group clearing. We're, we've uh, formed a group of uh, advanced healers, graduates uh, from the Master Dowsing and Energy Healing Group. And we'll be meeting on okay. Friday at 1 p.m. And we're going to, I'm going to be bringing that up as one of the objectives as to. Mm -hmm. Uh, do this as a group. So if you want to just uh, uh, text uh, Laura with the name of the person and we will put that in the group for a group healing. Okay. Because sometimes it's just, you know, individually or collectively, it's just, uh, it's, there isn't enough energy to be able to do it on yeah. your own. So but there's way more going on than just one. Yeah, there's when way I'm more just, going on. So and I would definitely have this person do the DCP for sure. Yeah, are you as a person doing the deep clearing protocol? Uh, is the person doing yeah. narrow? No. Um, I there's a lot of resistance there. Yeah, there's a lot of resistance. Part. There's a lot of resistance to life. Absolutely. Are you? Oh, yeah. Are you doing it uh, for yeah. him? Are you doing it for him? Uh, it's actually for his sister. Yeah. Yeah. Are you doing it for but her? It, it, for her, yeah. How often are you doing it for her? Uh, yes. <laughs> that would be a yes model. <laughs> I mean, you got to consistently do it because you're building up an energy field. You're dealing with an entity that's super strong because of the addiction going on, right? And so, yes. uh, you know, every time he uh, there's a desire to drink is uh, coming from that same yeah. entity. And if that, you don't boot that entity out, then that entity yeah. will come back in with the <laughs> next sip of alcohol. And there, and there also has to be a want to not drink from your sister as well. Because yeah. remember that she started drinking first before the entity was this strong of one was able to jump on and, and stay on. So she, she has to take personal responsibility for this. And you are not her God or savior either. So we got to remember that. We right. do have free will. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and I did pull back. And so she, it seemed like she was doing the best she could. Um, so when I gave that a whole break and I saw, okay, there, there was some participation, but then as soon as she does, it's like she says it comes back with such evil for it. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's just, yeah. And, and it just drives her to insanity. Yeah. This is going to sound cruel. Uh, Let's say what it. I'm getting is that you got to stop being a mattress between mm -hmm. her and rock bottom um, reality. And yeah. this is a tough one. Unless she reaches out yeah. to you and has had enough of enough, there's nothing you can yeah. say or do that's going to help her make turn the corner. So mm -hmm. this is known as yeah, tough yeah. love. And I do see that. I do see that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is tough mm -hmm. love. The hardest uh -huh, thing yeah. will be for you to deal with your own emotions as your sister goes through this and uh, hits the bottom. Yeah. But I, you know, let me, you know, let me just tune into this just a sec. So, um, what is the question? Well, I just want to know whether that she will turn around and ask for help. I get a pretty clear yes. Do you, um, Laura? Mm -hmm. if yeah, but it has. It kind of has to be placed back on her. I'll only work with alcoholics 
and and drug abusers that actually come to me and ask me for help. Yeah, but what I'm and I get that. I what I'm asking is if she goes to rock bottom, will she reach out for help? The answer I get is yes. What mm -hmm. do, you, do you get yes or that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it shouldn't be so scary if you know that when she hits rock yeah. bottom, she will ask for help. All right. Yeah. Hopefully that's helpful. We have somebody yeah. else on the line. Yeah. We love you and we will leave you. Yeah. Hello, welcome to the wellness show. Who are we talking to? Oh, I think they disappeared. So if you were on the line and got cut off for any reason, you can phone in toll free at 1 369 7464. Laura, you have your finger up? Yeah, we have a question from Michelle. Right. She said, What can she do for her dog, Lacey? Um, the dog's stomach is so swollen on one side. According to the pendulum, it says there's a blockage from something she ate. It also said I can take care of it at home. I did use the pendulum over, over her to work on her. But go ahead and take that, and then we can get back. There's a knot in the gut dog's gut. Mm -hmm. Hello, well, welcome to the welcome wellness show. Who are we talking to? Hi, um, this is Linda calling. Hi, Linda. And, um, yeah, good morning. I, I think I have kind of a dovetail issue with the person that just called in about, you know, an entity and so on and so forth. And I, as you know, I've been working hard on my daughter who has a compromised immune system. She's been chronically ill, so I've been working a lot on her. And I can get her pretty good, but it always falls back. Right. And um, she always falls back into, you know, not feeling well and so on and so forth. So today I got, I said, okay, is there something on her that, some energy or something that's on her that keeps pulling her back. Um, and what I got was there was a um, kind of a large energetic thought form that had formed um, because she's been chronically ill from people that have been, um, you know, you know, have been family members, extended family members, boyfriends, so on and so forth, that have created judgment anger resentment um so forth and so i got i just wanted to see if that if i'm right on cue with that yeah you are you're on cue i, I like the way you describe that because i've really never thought about it that way but absolutely all those thought forms from everybody else's judgment makes it exceedingly difficult uh for that person to clear or to be cleared so you know, so the so anybody listening to the show, please, please stay out of judgment about other people. You don't know why that alcoholic or that person's on drug or why they chose to have AIDS or chose to have whatever that's happening in their life. You have no idea why they chose on the soul level to have this experience, and you judging them does not help them. And in fact, it damages both you and them, right? So please right. stay it, out of judgment, everybody, because it makes it difficult for that person. In actual fact, what if the person is ill and going through this so that you can work on your judgment? Everybody out there, have you ever thought of that? Right. So yeah, well, that's that's really an excellent point, and I just I really got a big hit on that. Was that I know her brother deeply resents her because. You know, all during their childhood, he saw her as being needy and pulling her, you know, me and her father away. And you know, Kermit, this is. You know, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way. I don't give attention, believe me. But anyway, those are deep it's anger and resentment. Well, put, it all, put it all in the court of atonement. The whole, whole family, all the dynamics. Oh, yeah, good idea. Put it in the court oh, of that's atonement. A, oh, that's a really good idea. All of it. The second, all of it. Thing, yeah. the second thing I did when I was dowsing today regarding her was, I said, why does she keep... You know, I clear bacteria, virus, fungus, candida, blah, 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 blah. And then I got, she has really a difficult time detoxing. So what I installed was a program or system by which, you know, she would be able to more easily detox and not hold whatever has been released from her tissues or organs or whatever that she can release the she doesn't you know, go through that horrible detox where you feel sick you know you right. feel ache, you, know, you feel like you have the flu um but rather to install some kind of a program so i hope that's helpful too we'll see but yeah anyway. that's a great idea you know talk to her elemental eye to um, make the clean run the cleansing and healing program with less stress and duress to the body right 
So right, I, elemental. I okay, yeah, that I makes recommend. sense. Yeah, so I'll Laura's try. Got, I, wait I a minute, Laura's got her finger up, so don't run. Yeah. I would yeah. recommend um, Prem joining our um, class on Fridays because I I think that she's an um, a unique healer that really needs really needs more from from everybody. Does that mean like you know how we all come together and and give each other more information? She needs more information. Like she's kind of she's kind who's of riding the bike. Who, which, which she are we talking about? Krem. Hmm? This the is person Krem. is talking or the person she's talking about needing healing. No, I'm talking about Prem, the woman calling in right okay. now. She should be in Wait, our you group. Think? You're talking about me, Linda, or my daughter? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were your name. Was, I thought you were Prem. It's Linda. Yes, she, Linda should be in our class. And then through that, her daughter will be healed because I believe that because it's so karmic that once Linda kind of gets out of it a little bit too, and looks at it from a different perspective that it, because she's kind of, like I said, she, I feel like she's riding a tricycle and she should be riding a BMW. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's doing. Well, which, one, which one are you talking about? Me or my daughter? Talking about you. Linda. Right. Oh, okay. We're I'm riding about, a tricycle. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're trying to use a tricycle to get from A to B mm -hmm. when you should be using a BMW to get from yep. A to B. And so uh, what Laura's saying is that uh, you should be in our advanced class of dowsing and energy yeah. healing certification so that you can up your game. That's what yeah. she's saying. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's interesting because I've been seriously thinking about it. And I um, yeah. have kind of known, I've been told by many people, you're a healer, you're a healer. But whenever I, you know, I've tried different modalities, different practices, but Laura was referring the other day to people get burned out and they get so exhausted. And that was always my experience. I would just get, I mean, doing one little energetic body healing on somebody, I'd be totally wiped out yeah, for the rest you, of the day. Yeah, so you're running the I energy. Can I, I can't. You should actually be doing the opposite and going up. Yeah. yeah. So you're just, you're running other people's energy and that's what the deep clearing protocol is. And, you know, we will run you through the deep clearing protocol. So you have clear boundaries. Um, all of the people that work under this umbrella love learn how to have clear boundaries so that we never run yeah. any of the healing through us. And in fact, we just become conduits, a channel for divine mother or beings of light or whoever you want to call them on the other side to do the work. Right. We're just a conduit. So we and can that's when you that's people. when you get your BMW baby. <laughs> that's when you get your BMW. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well that's interesting. We I have been seriously thinking about this because I'm thinking, you know, this is the time where you you're at home and you, you know, you could say it's sort of like, okay, now it's like now or never, you yeah, just now or, you know, so I don't think it was any accident, but my daughter also has been told that she's a healer. So, you know, she's, but she has, um, she can't even, you know, she, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, she's, she a, she's, she's in the wounded healer stage. Okay. In the yeah. cry on wounded healer stage. And yes, many wounded healers become a very good, healers because when they get out the other end of their own addiction or their own problem or get over themselves or their own story then they can turn around and help the next person do the same because they've been down that path and they when they speak to the about their truth other people feel it in their voice and want to work with them so yeah she's just not there that you are no, but no. you get yeah and she has she won't work with anybody who um, has not had a chronic illness. She said, if they haven't been through what I'm going through, yeah. they don't have any credibility. Well, wow, this is a poor me, you know, I, my story is stronger than anybody else's story. And right, you, right. <laughs> if you can't, uh, my hero badges, I have 14 chronic diseases. And if you don't match my energy, I'm not going to play with you. Hey, uh, <laughs> you know. That, well, that person needs a DCP, man. So, <laughs> all right. Well, have, I mean, don't make me feel so terrible. I'm riding a tricycle. I mean, have I have I been able to help my daughter? I've been doing that. Of course you have. Listen, course you if you don't ride a tricycle, you can't ride a bicycle. If you don't ride a bicycle, whoa, 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 whoa. you guys are talking over each other. Work with every day, and we get her pretty good, and then yeah. she falls back. Right. And so I said to my team today, I said, "I'm missing something. What am I missing? There's why does she keep falling back?" And I got this 
image of this energetic bubble that has been formed over decades right. about judgment about my daughter. It's like, what's wrong with it? Why can't she get her life together? Right. I mean, she's right, you know, blah, 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 blah. So there's this huge thing. Yeah, so what if <laughs> what if this is energetic bubble is really your lineage, right? And what if you're, what if she put up her hand and says, I'm going to incarnate and I'm going to go live through this and burst this bubble that's multi-generational and get this done? What if that's what she's doing? Well, I've always thought that, that she had, she came in, we talked about this before, she came in to clean up the lineage, and I'm like, holy Toledo girl, I mean, you've really, <laughs> you know, taken, you know, and I've been doing the deep clearing, um, my, you know, with, you know, including her in mm. my deep clearing, um, and I think we've done pretty good. Um, but this falling back when I can get her, it's frustrating. It's like, it's like a teacher, you know, they yeah. you think they've got something and then, oh, the next day they come to school and, well, no, we like, can't give you a Mary Kay pink Cadillac, but we could give you a Ferrari. So why don't she, <laughs> so, okay. you know, why don't well, you now just, on Friday, what are you going to be doing on this Friday? Well, we're going to be talking about the very thing that we're, you're, we're talking with you is, Okay, gang, you, you know, uh, all of you have graduated. You've been through the course. We're opening the door for the next go around. Everybody says they want to play in the old group, not the old group, but those that have graduated say we were when we're looking for new people to join us. They get to co-teach, right? Just not Tyson. Uh -huh. They get to co-teach and, and, and collectively as a group, we want to up our game by doing clearings for people that need it. Uh, as a group, because we all know that the group consciousness of working uh, together will be very, very powerful. So we want to take it to another level because there's some very tough cases like what you just mentioned that we want to get them through to the other side, right? Because if it's true that she's here to do the lineage, then we want to get that, per we want to get you through so you can help her get through and get mm -hmm. the lineage cleaned up, right? But remember she's physical, mental and spiritual being and and when you only work on the energetic part of her, that that that's where I think some of this is lost too. There's just some things that I think that she's missing. I apologize if yeah. I'm overstepping, but yeah, um, she's still upset about that. That's the cold little Laura. No, I know. <laughs> that's because you got to start somewhere, no, though. I, mean, I, ready I, to I don't consider myself pretty intuitive and so on so forth. So do I, but I, I yeah. definitely. I all that. right, I'll give you a BMX. How about that? You can have a BMX bike, bicycle. <laughs> Don't let it hit her ego. I had to take the class too. I've learned so much. Friday and other people? Yes, not. yes, you can. It's going to cost okay. you many, many dollars, but you can. But, but we will let you in and see if you like the group. How about that? So anybody who wants okay. to come and play with us, you can just uh, you can just uh, text Laura and say I want to come into the Friday class and we'll let you in and come and learn who we are whether you want to be part of us okay mm -hmm. okay so that sounds good so this is the okay, master thank you so much. you're welcome okay okay bye 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 so this is what we're talking about is the master dowser and energy healing mm -hmm. certification course it's a six month course of three hundred thirty three dollars U S you get to learn from me. You get to learn from how many is in the group now? I mean, you five five people in the group will be helping you. Uh, you can do pair up with them and do separate ones. Like uh, Laura's been working with Tony, so you can mm -hmm. do side thing. You can do buddy coaching. You can do deep clearings together, and also you get not just to learn from me. You get to learn from uh, John Living, you get access to his books, you get access to Master Dowsers and Energy Healing, some of them who have passed on. And so it's a body of information that I've inherited and I'm passing on to the next generation. So it's the best that I can source and get and that we're always adding to that body of information. So it's like lifelong learning, right? We really don't graduate, even though we do give you a certificate. And if you if there's a match energetically, then you can come under my umbrella and do the deep clearing and have, you know, provide coaching to your clients using all those skills that you learned in the group. So if you're coming in, you know, this is really ideal for somebody that's already a Reiki healer or has some other modalities that they that they have under their belt as well, right? This is sort of how does dowsing and energy healing add to your repertoire of being able to heal how do, how can we help you 
take the next energetic step to do that. So back to Michelle Montgomery, Let, let's work on her dog, Lacey, quick, you. Uh, and Michelle, I have your bottle of water here. I think you sent me your address. Uh, please send it again. And I haven't even charged you yet. So I apologize for that. I'm going to take money out of your card very soon. So I'm letting you know. All right, your doggy. All right, so something's going on in this tummy. Let me see. Can I go in there and do something with it? Good thing I've been watching those vet shows, eh? Oh, I've been watching the doctor do these advanced operations. I've been so amazed by them. And I'm thinking, wow, if he can do that, uh, you know, physically, why can't we do this energetically? So I'm just well, we going to go in there. We can, of course. Of course we can. So I'm just going to go. I think there's a knot in the gut. So let me just see. Hmm. So is there anything that needs to be taken out? Is, is there, is it just a gut blockage? Yes. Yeah. So can I un untwist the gut? Not yet. Okay. Can I send some energy to the gut to untwist it? How about more energy? All right. Let's move in. Good. Okay. Untwist. Okay. So it's untwisting. So let's see, on a scale of zero to 100, where are we? Okay, we're about 50% done. Hmm, 75% done. Okay, we're done. Okay, so I went to massage the dog. I give him quite a bit of water. Uh, I would also massage that part of his body. Gently, um, gently. Mm -hmm. Gently, yeah. Or even, if, and if that's too sore, just lay your hands on uh, the spine, one on, on hand on the spine, one hand on his tummy, right? And then yeah. let the energy run from one hand to the other. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it looks like it's clearing up. Mm -hmm. What are you getting, Laura? Yeah, I had um, uh, Harold McCoy go in and he, um, they kind of like zigzag thing on, on the dog and then they put the white light in and then um, vacuuming. The, do the dog seems, is there something wrong with the left eye too? Unless it's, maybe it's, no. Well, it's my left eye anyway. Well, let's straighten out your left eye there. Well, I'm just unplugging your optic nerve and replugging it back in there, cleaning the 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 ends of it. And we'll replug it back in. Do a little clean up in the joints. Yeah, that should help. I can <laughs> see. I can see. <laughs> yeah, it's much better. <laughs> yeah. All right. You got any last scratches out there? I think we must be pretty close to the top. No. When we are at the top of the hour, but we did, we had some really great questions. Um, people are asking me how to, how to text you. You can text me at 608-217-7689. If you don't catch that, you can also uh, just Google my name and my name's all over Google. So yeah, so don't forget the door, the door is open for the Master Dowsing and Energy Healing Certification Course. It's six months at $333. It's worth every single penny. You're going to get to work with five of us. It's a lot of fun. We meet once a week for one hour. And we learn from Master Dowsers and Energy Healers. And we share. And now we're going to be doing group work on those uh, more difficult clients that, for whatever reason, get repossessed. So we're going to be doing some deeper work on that level. And I'm excited about that because that's the next level that we're being asked to work with yeah. on the other side with those that we work with. Okay, and don't forget Friday class. It's at 10 uh, Pacific and 10 a.m. Pacific and we're dowsing to remove fear or dowsing to get you out of fear. So uh, come and join us for that. And don't forget coming up at the end of the month will be uh, 20, a $33 a month um, 
opportunity to get everything for that month for $33, which is a real amazing steal, okay? So there you are. So same time, same place, uh, tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning. if we didn't get your questions answered, there's always tomorrow. So bye for now. Bye. Be healthy, happy, and holy. Bye for now. For quality online wellness products, courses, and services, visit our sponsors, thewellnessstore.ca and the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy located at thewellnessacademy.ca. To stay in touch, visit us at thewellnessshow.ca. And until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.